my name is Patrick, and I will talk about my paper about distributed surface reconstruction. Um, first, some context. Um, as you all probably know, 3D scanning technology is getting better and better. We get more um, detailed scans, um, and this results in very large point clouds being accumulated. Um, and for many applications, you actually need to like deduce the object surface of the of the scanned of the real object that that was scanned. Um, for example, for some simulation stuff, like simulating floods or something. Um, and how to get from that point cloud to the surface is actually the problem of surface reconstruction. Um, not only that, but we also want to do it very fast and for large, large data sets. Um, there are two basic approaches for, th for this. Um, first one being approximation approaches, where you, similarly to curve fitting in 2D, you try to fit um, you represent the surface as a function and try to fit this, this function to the points. Um, the second one is interpolation approaches, um, where you usually interpret the points as nodes of a graph, like vertices of a graph, and then try to extract from the faces of the graph, like you, you try to filter the faces of the graph so that only the surface remains, the actual surface of the object. Um, one often used graph for, for this is the Delaunay triangulation. Um, and the approach we're using, the, the algorithm, um, is called ball filter and actually uses the Delaunay triangulation itself. Um, unfortunately, it's a very recent approach. Um, it's so recent that it hasn't even been published yet, so I can't really go into details of how it works. Um, but um, yeah, it, it can reconstruct the surface in O, like in n log n time for n points, um, and it can reconstruct open surfaces. But it has one, like problem when you're dealing with, with very large um, large point clouds they often don't even fit in the memory of, of like a single machine um, so it would either be impossible or very slow to to like reconstruct large data sets um, so our approach is to just um, to distribute it to mul multiple machines um, so we can scale scale the input size um, and also do it faster. Um, it's a very simple idea, actually. Um, we just take the, the input point set um, and split it into chunks that can then be processed independently from each other. Um, then we distribute those chunks to the processes in a in a as fair way as possible, like equal distribution. Um, then we can work on the actual surface reconstruction within the individual individual chunks, um, and then we have to somehow merge the surfaces within each chunk back together to, uh, to like get the final model. Um, so how do we do the subdivision, actually? Um, this is a point cloud in 2D. Um, one very simple thing would do to just uh, use a grid subdivision, like to spatially subdivide those points um, into grid cells and then work on each grid cell individually. But we quickly run into a problem when, when we do this because um, this is the Delaunay triangulation of the entire point set. Um, and you can see when you check out the triangulations for each cell that um, if you combine them, you are missing the edges between the grid um, like boundaries. Um, so you have to do, if, if, if you just ignore it for now, you have to do like some complex um, mesh repairing at the end because you get like splits in your, in your final model. Um, so what we do is um, we just add a padding. Uh, just bear with me now. It, it makes sense in a second. Um, this actually fixes the problem for us. Um, we will include the points um, within a certain padding around each each grid cell, and we call the set of all points within the grid cell as well in the padding. Um, we we, ca we call that a tile. So tiles are like overlapping subsets of our point cloud, um, and the now we are still missing some some triangles here. That that's not a mistake. Um, the problem, uh, li like the thing is, um, the ball filter algorithm actually has a parameter, um, and it, it ignores based on this parameter, it ignores uh, like long triangles with very long edges. Um, so we can just choose the padding based on this parameter. So all the triangles are guaranteed, like all triangles that are considered by ball filter to be part of the final reconstruction are in entirely contained in at least one tile. Um, 
So the overall result when we then merge it together, like just take the union of it, um, is guaranteed to be equal to the um, ball filter result for the entire point cut. Um, okay, so we have split our input. Um, now we have to distribute it. Um, there is no assumption about the about the distribution of points within the point cloud for us, at least. So uh, each tile may contain various like counts of points. There uh, may be tiles with fewer points, or tiles with more points. Um, so computing the perfect assignment so that each process gets an equal number of points is actually uh, a very hard task. It's the classic problem of load balancing. Um, but fortunately for us, there are like uh, many approximation algorithms. We chose like the, the simplest one. It's LPT list scheduling. And it's uh, guaranteed to give a solution that um, is within four thirds of the optimal solution. Uh, okay, so we have assigned the tiles. But uh, now, like, now, now we perform the reconstruction for each. Like every process performs the reconstruction for all its assigned tiles. Um, but how long do we take? How long is like the the runtime of this step? Um, it depends on how long the runtime for the slowest process is, obviously. Um, and this depends like on the distribution of of load, uh, which again depends on the point distribution and the grid that we chose to subdivide the input. Some, some inputs might even not be, be like subdividable, equally subdividable by a regular grid, but I'll get to that later. Um, yeah, so in the worst case, we have like, for example, we have two tiles. Um, one just contains like three points and the other tile contains all other points. Um, so we would have like the same runtime than, than ball filter. It would be essentially the same as running ball filter on the entire point cloud. Um, if in the second case, like in, in the best case, we would have like an equal split, like perfectly uniform distribution, um, and then it's n log n over p would be the parallel runtime for that case. This takes one as takes one assumption actually, um, and that is when we look at the um, duplication of points for the overla overlapping subsets. Um, for now, we assume it's a constant factor. For example, if a, if a vertex is within the overlap of all four tiles, it, it gets duplicated four times, li like three times. It would be four times in the, in the um, like, it would, would, it, would have be ha it would have to be taken into account like four times. Um, for in, in, the th in the three day case, this is eight times. But if we have like a padding that is larger, um, we could have overlap of more, more than eight tiles. Um, but for now, we just assume it's a constant. Um, in the evaluation, I, I might say something about that too. Um, yeah. So now we have the results for e for within each tile, um, and we need to merge them. Now it's easy because we already have all the triangles within all tiles, so uh, we don't need to do any complex mesh repairing. We can just take the unit of all. Um, but some triangles might be in multiple tiles, so we. Um, we we'll get some duplicate triangles. We might get some duplicate triangles, um, but, but these can just trivially be removed by some post-processing step, and then we we'll just output it, output it to some file. Um, for the implementation, uh, we decided to split to split the, the pipeline into two executables. First one being just a splitting of the point cloud. The second one being everything else. Um, so th this actually has a, the advantage that we can exchange one or the other for any other implementation. Um, maybe we could split any other way or use some other reconstruction algorithm that has a guarantee in the edge length. Um, and as a common interface to uh, between two those two parts, uh, we use the file system, we use a file format. Um, yeah. So, and, and the split was implemented using CUDA on a GPU, and the reconstruct was implemented using MPI. Um, and the original ball filter impl implementation as well. And all that was so we could run them on a high performance computing cluster. Um, we ran our, our um, program on the VSC3 plus cluster. It's a high performance computing cluster based in Vienna. It's already shut down, but um, there's a succeeder, I guess. I think it's VSC5 or something. Um, and now we want to empirically compare um, the original ball filter with our distributed version of it, and try, uh, like figure out how 
how it behaves when we add more processes or when we add more inputs, like a larger point cloud. Um, for now, uh, let's just say we uh, the number of tiles, like the grid, we choose them based on the number of processes. This is might not be the optimal way to do it, um, but um, yeah, I, I'll th the the detailed considerations are in the paper. I'm not really sure if I'm on time right now, so uh, if I'm faster, I could, could come back to that as well. Um, so the uh, the when we scale the number of processes up, um, yeah, we. We, we, we ran the entire thing on a point cloud with 32 million points. Um, we actually had to choose like a small, rather small point cloud because the original ball filter algorithm implementation wouldn't work for larger ones. But um, uh, yeah, here's a comparison when you when you scale up the number of processes um, of, of the distributed runs uh, versus the original ball filter, uh, and you can see for one process it's it's lower to use a distributed version. It's pretty obvious because uh, you have all the overhead uh, with with like splitting, outputting the tar files, and so on, um, which you wouldn't have with with the original ball filter. Um, but we but if you add uh, processes, you see it it, it gets faster real, real quick. But at some point, it doesn't really get faster anymore because with more processes, you need more tiles, um, which means you need a finer subdivision. But if the points are like very badly distributed, or not even like cannot be separated very well by a regular grid, then um, you would leave some processes idle. So so it doesn't really get faster beyond some point. Um, yeah, if and then we we compared both versions when we scaled up the input size. We did this by uh, using a large point cloud and truncating it to um, just fixed numbers of points. Um, and uh, yeah, you, you can see like the distributed version here was run with 16 processes, um, and like we saw earlier, uh, they, they behave very similarly in runtime, but with another co like a smaller coefficient. The the distributed version was was faster by a like by by five times faster with like. After like eight processes, we're consistently like five times faster than the original one. Um, yeah, the red, the red dashed line is actually the best possible speed up, and that like when you do the original ball filter uh, and divide its runtime by 16 with 16 processes, um, this would be the, the theoretical perfect speed up for this. Um, and we are. Not quite there, but it's like a, a large, a large improvement towards it. Um, so yeah, to summarize, our distributions, uh, our contributions, where we designed distributed version of the um, distributed memory parallel version of ball feature. Um, we implemented it on the VSC3 plus cluster and evaluated this, evaluated it. Um, we had a nice improvement towards linear speedup, but the actual speedup depends on the um, subdivision we chose like the grid and the point distribution within the point cloud itself. Like, like I said, some um, quite often, like most of the time for real world scans, you can't uh, subdivide the input by a regular grid and expect each tile to have an equal number of points. That's just, impo just not possible. Um, so yeah, that, that choosing another subdivision method might be um, part of future work or uh, like accounting for the point distribution formally as well might also be part of future future work. Um, that's it from my side, uh, and yeah. Okay, thank you for a very interesting uh, presentation. And now we have time for the questions. Okay, there's one question over there left. So thank you for the presentation. Uh, so in your in your presentation, you kind of focused on the performance of the distributed algorithm as compared to the original version. And what I'm interested in is uh, where you showed the strategy for merging of the tiles. 
uh, if you actually like, what is the resulting geometry of the distributed algorithm? Is it the same or is it different than from the original one? It's it's the same. Um, like when we when we include a padding, um, when we include points w within a padding based on the ball filter parameters, um, we only like we only miss those triangles that would not have been part of the reconstruction anyway. So yeah. It would be the same result. So basically, the padding is like ideal fix, and you don't really need to solve anything else uh, regarding the merging, right? So it, sorry again. Like because this this to me seems like an inherent problem of like how to merge it, the the tiles. But from what you're saying, this is basically solved, and it works with the padding, ideally because you get the same geometry. So you you like consider this part to be resolved, and you don't. Uh, you don't do not plan to to try some other strategies for uh, for, for this except the padding, right? I mean, another another idea would be like to like I said, um, you could try to repair like you could without the padding, you could just try to repair the or the result, um, but the padding essentially fixes that. Okay, thank so you. So you 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 would get like those overlapping parts here. Can you see my mouse? Yeah. Those parts would would be part of both reconstructions, or maybe considered in both tiles. So they might be in the result twice. Yep. Um, we only need to remo remove those. We don't need to add anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. That that's answered my questions. There's an another question here. Um, I have a question regarding the tile size. Did you? Uh, consider using dynamic approach for the tile size, like or hierarchically um, dividing the tile again if there are too many points inside, and what are the effects? Yeah, uh, we also considered using like dynamic hierarchical spatial direct hierarchical structures, like oak trees, for example. Um, but having like equally sized tiles is is very nice. Um, it's very nice for, for our assumption of constant duplicate point du duplication because when we use like s some oak tree, we get some tiles much, much smaller. Um, and if they are within the padding, um, we would have to duplicate it entire tiles. So they, they only get smaller if there are more points in it, and then we would have to duplicate more points. So, so we don't really get any, any guarantees on the runtime that way. But we also considered that, and it might be some some approach. It might be work better. I don't know. Could could work. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there's also another question here. Okay, thanks. Uh, so my question is, uh, where do you see like the um, time consumption that's more uh, like th on the side of uh, kind of problem with load balancing that some of the processes finish earlier than others, or is it uh, more of the overhead issue of like joint merging and everything? Um, it, it's like an overhead issue because of um, like the overlap, because of the point overlap. We, we get duplicate points and that some, wait, actually, could you, could you rephrase that? Could you say it so again? So like, there is like two issues, right? Like some processes may finish sooner than others. That's yeah. like one source of kind of uh, why it's not like uh, linear speed up. Mm -hmm. And the other issue is like the overhead because you have to do some additional computation to merge them together. So yeah. where do you see the like possibility for like further gains in terms of kind of improving this algorithm? Or where, wh what is the bigger problem to solve and which one is easier to solve? Okay, yeah, I think it's the, the load balancing one. I think um, it's hard to subdivide to fast, uh, subdivide the point cloud in a fast way that you can equally distribute them. So, uh, so I think it's the, the one that some processes just don't have much less work to do. I think Thanks. That's, that's a harder problem. All right, thank you. And maybe we'll have time for one last question. Okay, Maros came in, do you have a question? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well then, um, if there are no other questions, well, thank you for your presentation. It was really interesting, and I think there was a very hard work behind uh, your presentation and research. And now, thank you all for attending uh, the, this very short session. And uh, now I think we have a bit more time, and I think we will uh, try to find out if we will be outside for the next session. 
Thank you and enjoy the rest of the day.